Once upon a time, there was an infinite forest. No matter how far any traveller would venture, they would never reach the end of the trees. There were places where beeches stood tall and solemn, like columns in a cathedral. Dark places where pine trees huddled close together, and places where ancient, gnarly trees rested, old enough to have forgotten their own names. But throughout all of the woods, the same presence could be felt. Some called it the heartbeat of the woods. Others knew it as the spirit. But most simply called it the will of the woods. Nobody quite knew what it was, but all knew that it was the will that gave life to every living being within, from the tiniest acorn to the boldest ball. The woods were in harmony, for whatever happened within them, every creature felt the rhythm of the woods' heartbeat in its soul and acted accordingly. Deep in the heart of the woods, there stood a tree, almost three times the size of any other tree around it. It had been dead for many ages, in fact, its entire crown was gone. But the trunk of this once magnificent tree still stood proud and tall. On its rough bark, enormous mushrooms grew. These mushrooms were so large that perhaps one could have imagined fairies living inside of them. The creatures in its mushrooms were indeed quite real, but they were not fairies since they didn't have wings, but perhaps they could be called elves, being tiny and having pointy ears. These elves had built an entire village within the hollow trunk of the tree, and each mushroom was like a small building protruding from a larger structure. Within the tree, a huge spiral staircase connected the mushrooms of the 300 elves who lived there. Among the elves, no one was particularly rich or deemed better or more important than any other, but one among them was exceptional, and his name was Saffredon. Elves age very slowly, so slowly that some of the oldest among them still look like they're in their twenties. But Saffredon was so old that he was the only one among all the elves to have a beard. A long, snowy beard and equally long whiskers reaching to his feet. His hair was draped around his shoulders and his brows were like white wings reaching out. He lived alone in the roots of the tree, and as the village wizard, he was the eldest and most respected among all elves. His councils were held sacred by everyone. And yet, few of them ever visited him, keeping a distance out of awe and perhaps a bit of fear as well. Most of them, except one, his pupil, young Nuswick. Shut the door, Nuswick. Well, take off that cloak and sit down. Master, I... Some time has passed, and I'm afraid I... I mean, nothing's changed, really. My dear boy, how many times must I tell you? Patience. Patience is a virtue you will need to learn. I'm not sure I even want to be patient anymore. If you don't know what you want, you won't find it, lad. Cease troubling your mind and wasting my precious time. I'm sorry, Master. It's just that I would so dearly love to be... to be... Like me? You will never be exactly like me, Nuswick. And it will take you at least another five hundred years to grow a beard like mine. Small steps, boy, small steps. 
the root leaf juice? Um, yes, please. Right. Now, what is the purpose of your visit on this late hour? As I said, uh, some time has passed and... And nothing's changed. I know. I know what you're feeling, my lad. You do? It is the will of the woods. I felt it too when I was your age, and as a youngster, it took me some time to learn how to deal with it. I know what it's like, that overwhelming power, that intensity, that, like the life force of all the woods and all their denizens are flowing through your veins, your heart burning like the sun. Master, I don't know if, if what I'm feeling in my veins is in fact the will of the woods. Of course it is, my boy. You are the new village wizard. I foretold it upon your birth, and I know it with all my being. You will be my successor. I don't think it's the heartbeat of the woods that I feel, but my own. And I don't think my heart is burning for the harmony of the Great Spirit, but rather for... Um, um, but what? For, for Marilia, you, you know? In love. That's all. You're simply, mundanely, everyday run of the men in love. Which, which, which doesn't mean I, I do not intend to follow in your footsteps, Master. Yes. Uh, well, yes. It is a disappointment, to be frank. But all right. I assume you are indeed a bit young to be hearing the call of the will at this stage. Uh, and what are my feelings for Marilia? No, weak, my boy. Every elf falls in love at some point. But that is not my terrain, so there is no need to bother me about it. But, Master, you are the wisest of all elves. Wise? Oh yes, I suppose I am. And that's why I can tell you now. Nothing, no one is going to be a better guide for you than life itself. I do need some advice, Master. Dear boy. <laughs> and that is why you come to me. Listen, friend. All the advice in the world will not help you in this, because when you're in love for the first time, you will behave like a foolish creature, no matter how hard you try not to. All I can tell you is, don't worry too much about it. Oh. And go and see her tomorrow. Give her a flower. Go on a walk together and... Um, tell her what's on your mind. And try not to make a mess of it. Thank you, Master. I think... One of the smaller mushrooms that clung to the tree's bark was home to the Blueberry family. The father was called Balm Blueberry, a carpenter. Mother Blueberry was Tanner, the weaver. The Blueberries also had a daughter, Merilia, and she was probably the most beautiful of all the elven girls in the entire tree. Merilia had long flowing dark hair and deep sapphire eyes that reflected the light of the sun and turned it, in young Nuswick's opinion, into an unusually bright star shining in the cool blue firmament of a summer's evening. The young wizard's apprentice had discovered this particular quality of hers some time ago, and since then he had been quite eager to tell Merilia of his opinion, but... To date, at least, he had lagged to courage to do so. Although Merilia was approaching womanhood and Nuswick was still a few years younger, the pair of them were very close friends. Nuswick's parents had died when he had been no more than a tiny elf toddler, and the Blueberries had gladly taken it upon them to welcome one more elf into their family. And so, little Nuswick had spent his earliest years with the Blueberries, right up until the moment when the old wizard Saffredon had chosen him as his apprentice. Merilia, who rarely saw the old wizard, was very curious about the old elf, and she was often eager to learn more about the wisdom that Saffredon taught Nuswick. That morning, Nuswick had a plan, and it involved a flower. He rose particularly early out of the little room within the tree roots where he lived, and hastened past the many beautiful and delicate pathways, bridges and steps carved inside of the tree. And so, he made his way to an irregularly shaped door that led to the mushroom 
where the Blueberry family lived. Ma, oh, Nuz McLeod, good to see you. What have you got there, a flower? Yes, uh, it is. It's, um, it's for um, Mrs. Blueberry. Ah, well, how ridiculously sweet of you, boy. Oh, uh, go on, come in. Uh, you know the way, don't you? Look here, Tanner. Nuswick's got a flower for you. A flower? For me? Oh, how nice. H here you go, Mrs. Blueberry. Thank you, Nuswick. But may I ask, what's the occasion? Oh, uh, just, uh, you, you know, some flower giving never hurt anyone, did it? Uh, any, anyway, Mrs. Blueberry, do you happen to, um, know, perhaps, where Marilia might be finding herself? Currently, as, as it were, since I need to ask her about some uh, things. I'm afraid you've just missed her, boy. She went outside to pick some flowers. Uh, I see. Well, um, I'll be off then. We were just about to have breakfast. Aren't you hungry, Nuswick? Uh, no, uh, no, I'm, I'm uh, short on time today. <laughs> Bye. Hey, Marilia. Nuswick! How good of you to turn up. I was just about to go look for you. Oh? Uh, why? Why not? By the way, do you feel like uh, taking a look at the fallen hollow tree? Why? Well, why not? <laughs> no, sweet. No, sweet, no, sweet, no, sweet. The woods beyond the fallen hollow tree are no different from the woods here. You only think there's something special about that place because Saffredon told you that the tree marks the border of our land. Uh, Saffredon also told me that the land belongs to no elf, but that all elves belong to the land, so... So, does that mean our land doesn't end there? No, but it means Saffredon is only saying those things to keep us young elves close to our tree instead of looking for trouble farther on. Which is just why you're so keen on taking a look over there, isn't it? I get it. All right, I was going to go look for woodland anemones anyway, and I can't find them over here. Um, but speaking of flowers, I, I know you love flowers, so I gave one to your mother. <laughs> That's kind of you, Nuswick. It was meant for you, actually, the flower. I, I just got nervous. I, not that I don't like Mrs. Blueberry, I, I think she's great, but I just thought um, you'd enjoy it more. So, I I'm sorry for, for not giving you the flower, I mean. <laughs> That's all right, Nuswick. Come on, let's go look for that fallen tree of yours. Nuswick and Marilia happily made their way through the trees until they reached an enormous trunk that lay hollow, half-sunken in the ground, looking like some dark cave. Green tendrils of parasite plants hung despondently from the entrance. It was like a gloomy tunnel to the woods beyond, and whatever lay there was unknown to both elves, as even Nuswick had never dared to tread beyond that place. Still, however forbidding it looked, that place exuded a strange attraction to Nuswick, who liked nothing more than trying to climb it as far as he could without slipping. Come on, Nuswick, get down from that trunk. I know you can reach the top. You don't need to show me. Almost there. Silly boy. Nuswick? I made it. I can see that. Now let's see if you can make it down without hurting yourself. You should come up, Marilia. I can see the woods beyond. Never mind that, Nuswick. And, and I can see... Hey, that's odd. Come down, Nuswick, before some creature from beyond takes sight of you. Don't be silly, Marilia. Come on, jump down. Remarkable how quickly you made your way down once I mentioned those creatures. I, I've seen something interesting on your side. It, it's really not far. What did you see? It, it looked like some sort of, well, like a, a construction, really. A, a large gate or something. Nuswick, we came down here for woodland anemones. You did, I know. I came for adventure. 
Haven't you been adventurous enough all the day? N- no, because I've seen something and I want to know what it was. And, and who knows, maybe we'll find some anemones too along the way. What is that? It, it looks like... like roots sticking out of the earth, twisting to f- form a gate. Yes, but what is that? Those markings in the roots above it? Writing? Words? What does it say? It, it seems to be some form of ancient elven. Difficult to read, but, but wait. It says... Gate of... The world. And, and then there's a bit of moss covering the text, but after that there are three lines with the word lose in them. Lose? Lose what? I don't like this, Nuswick. Wait, I can read the top one. The wise will lose their destiny. And then? The carvings are fading a bit, but, but wait. That word means... Evil or, or evildoer will lose um, e- eternity, and then there's innocence or the innocent. The innocent lose elf self himself. That's it. The innocent will lose themselves, and the evil ones lose eternity. Strange. So. The gate of the world, the wise will lose their destiny, the evil will lose eternity, and the innocent will lose themselves. Must be an old saying or something, although I wouldn't understand what it means. Well, obviously, if you step through the gate, you will lose something. Oh, come on, you can't be serious. I don't know. Oh, come, we've seen this thing, let's go pick some flowers now. Yes, of course. Flowers. Look, look there, beyond the gate. There are some flowers there. On this side, there are just as many Nuswick, so stop it. And yet, there is something about this gate. I want to see what lies beyond it. You can see that, can't you? Trees, moss, flowers, nothing special. Maybe we'll find something over there. Like what? Something... No other elf has ever had something special. Come on, Nuswick. Just let me just put my hand through it, Marilia. No, come on. It won't hurt. Just my hand. Just let me try. Nuswick. Look, I'm, I'm moving my hand through the gate. And it's still attached. That's a good thing. But it, it feels so weird. It tingles. There must be magic involved. Stay away, Nuswick. I want to go through. No, Nuswick, stop it. Think. You're so curious. Come, let's go pick some flowers. I need to know what's beyond this gate, Marilia. No, Nuswick, you don't. Please don't do this. It's dangerous. Nuswick. Nuswick! Marilia, what's wrong? Nuswig's gone. He's gone. Gone? What do you mean? We were picking flowers in the woods and he saw a gate and you know what it's like and then he passed through and I tried to stop him but he's gone. Gone where? He can't just have vanished. He did vanish. He just stepped through the gate and he wasn't there anymore. That's not possible. Is it? It was magic. I saw it. He just disappeared. He's gone. He's lost. There, there. Oh. Oh, no. Bomb. I think I know. What? That gate. You don't think it's... It could be. What are you talking about? We must speak to Saffredon. Come on, Mirelia. Off to the roots of the tree. Merilia's parents hastily guided their daughter out of their home and sped down the many stairways within the tree, ignoring the concerned frowns of onlooking elves. Throughout the journey, 
Mirelia could barely refrain from crying, despite many comforting words from Tana and Balm. <laughs> At last, they reached the root of the tree, where they chose a long, winding tunnel, leading them down into the depths. The tunnel was brown and sandy, and would have been dark, were it not for the many little lanterns that spread a warm, yellowish light along the way. Here it was quiet, deserted even, compared to the busy village above. Finally, they reached the end of the tunnel and a round door with a large copper knob holding a ring in the middle of it. They anxiously knocked on the door. It was weak. Now, it's us! Do you think he'll even let us in? What's going on here? Something's happened to Newsweek. I, I might have known. Come in. What happened? Nuswick, he passed through a gate and now he's, he's... he's gone! She described it as... well, it reminded us of... The gate, you say? By the will? No. What are you talking about? I want to know! Marilia, what did the gate look like? It was made out of branches and, and it had words carved into it. You never told the children. We assumed it was just a story. Just a story? Saffron's stories are never just stories, you foolish elf. Be gone now. But Saffron... Leave us. I need to speak to him earlier. It's all right, Bomb. Let's just do what he says. I, I understand. We'll be right back then. No, you won't. I'll send Marilla after you. <whistles> Poor foolish girl. Do you have any idea what you've gotten yourself into? Oh dear. Sit down, don't cry. I'll give you something to calm down, just a moment. I don't need to calm down, I need to know what happened to Nuswick. All right, all right. Well, Nuswick has passed through the gate of the world. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. That's what your parents should have told you. I explained it to them when they were young. The gate of the world is a place you must avoid. It's the beginning and the end of the infinite woods. You see, even though our world has no end, there are still other realms beyond it. Beyond that gate? I fear so. And that's where Nuswick has gone? Nuswick, I fear, has gone to the larger world. The world where the will lives, where it originates. I don't understand. The true meaning of the gate remains a mystery, even to me, Marilia. It is beyond our understanding, created by a force older than the eldest trees and more powerful than the greatest sorcerer. I had hoped it would not appear here. But it looked so old, like it had always been there. How could you not have known it was here? The gate is mysterious. It can be found in the least expected places, and then suddenly vanish again the next day. But... but how can Nuswick ever return, then? Marilia, you said there were words carved into the gate. Do you know what they said? Uh, yes. Nuswick translated them for me. It said, uh, the gate of the world, the wise will lose their destiny. And the, um, the evil will lose eternity. And the, the innocent will lose themselves. But I don't understand any of that. I fear the meaning of those words is not always the same. But one thing is clear to me. Nuswick was an innocent. You mean he... he's lost himself? What does that even mean? I dare not say, Marilia. To be honest, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he can come back. I don't know if this is somehow part of his purpose in the will of the woods, or if he's just gone. Do you mean he may be dead? He's not dead, Marilia. He's somewhere else. 
and the will is looking out for him. That sounds like he's dead. I don't know, Marulia. It's hard to say. Hard to realize. He may not return. I'm sorry. I don't have the power to help you. Merilia and Saffredon shed silent tears together, until Saffredon summoned Barm and Tanner and told them of Nuswick's disappearance. They were deeply saddened by the news. A week later, a ceremony was held in the tree in remembrance of Nuswick. All elves present were deeply saddened, and some wept openly, but no one felt the hurt that had struck Merilia. She felt broken inside, as if a great part of her heart had suddenly been stripped away and the world itself was lost. As Saffredon tenderly described the bright pupil and the happy boy that he had known, Merilia quietly sunk into despair. In the days that followed, life in the tree slowly regained its normal pace, and over the months the horrid memory of Nuswick's disappearance faded. For Merilia, however, a deep, terrible emptiness remained, and she knew that a gaping hole could not be filled by anything less than Nuswick's return. She turned inwards, Becoming lonesome and quiet, she spoke only to her parents and to Saffredon, who had come to enjoy the girl's presence more and more over time. She took to visiting the old wizard more frequently, and learning ever more about the woods from him. She couldn't quite say why, but in conversing with this old elf, she somehow felt closer to Nuswick, as if there was still a part of him left in her life. Autumn turned to winter, and as the elves prepared for the encroaching months of darkness and started to make ready for the annual winter festivities, Merilia still often wandered alone in the woods. One dark, snowy night, as Merilia's parents were having a drink in the tavern mushroom, a patron entered the room with most unexpected news. Just look outside, Tanner. The woods are dark and the snow's deepening. It's getting dangerous for us elves. I know. And still Marilia keeps going out there, on her own no less. I'm worried, Bomb. The woods are looking grim and lonesome. Grim and lonesome. Sounds like Marilia herself. It's like the only one she still really talks to is Saffredon. I think she's still upset with us. For not telling her about the gate. We should have told her, but I'll admit I I never really believed the stories myself. Did you? No, but I certainly do now. There's more in the woods that can be dreamt of by us, and we often forget how small we really are. Who knows what dark beings roam out there, looking for defenseless prey like Marilia. I don't want her to go too far out there, or too late in the night. I would want her to stay here and enjoy the winter festivities. It's Boar the Lumberjack. Landlord, the strongest drink you have. I got a strange tale to tell. What's wrong, Boar? You look like you've seen a ghost. Ha, ha, ha. That's hitting the nail on the head, friend. Come, fill my acorn cup. Watch out, this is a stiff drink. There's no drink on earth that'll settle my nerves. Enough mystery, old friend. Tell me what happened. Well, it's a tale that will raise the airs on your back, freeze the blood in your veins, and have your teeth clacking in sheer terror. A tale of supernatural horror and gruesomeness 
A tale. Why don't you just tell me the tale and I'll find out how scary it is then. All right, all right. Well, this morning I got up to chop some wood for the fire. But what with all the snow, I couldn't find anything dry enough. So I went a bit deeper in the woods, you know, beyond that fallen tree. Now, as I went, I thought it'd be a good time to hunt some snow mouse. So I took my bow and a shaft of arrows. I found some dry branches and was blithely chopping along when suddenly I saw footprints. Not doubt in my mind, snow mouse. So I went on and on in the woods, all the while thinking of a nice hot meal that was awaiting me so hard that I lost track. I didn't find no snow mouse, and on top of that, I was lost. Hey, don't give me that look. You know how easy it is to get lost out there, especially with all the snow and everything looks the same. I'm not saying anything, boy. Go on. Well, as I said, I didn't catch anything. And it, it was getting late, so I was in a pretty foul mood as I was trying to remember the way back. And, and on top of that, it was getting dark and I was sick of the cold. Now, as I was trying to find my way, I suddenly came by some part of the woods I, I couldn't remember seeing before. The trees were a little closer together there, forcing me to climb their big roots all sticking out. So I, I crawled and I climbed, and all the while losing my temper as I went on. And then it was that I heard the sound. A sound? The ghastliest sound that I have ever heard. At first it was like a... like a hissing of sorts. But then I realised... It were breathing, like like someone having trouble breathing. I was so startled, I just I just stood there listening, looking around. I didn't see anything, so I I crawled on, landed in a dark place between the roots of four gnarly old trees, and and then I saw it. What? What did you see? A, a kind of a kind of shadow. At first, I, I thought it were nothing, but then it, it started moving. Quietly, it, it sort of glided rather than walked. I thought it was someone wearing a dark hooded cloak, but then I saw the hands. No, not hands, claws. These were claws with fingers like long, pale spider legs. It glided past me, just, just breathing like that. And then it, it disappeared into the woods. I just stood there, holding my breath for, for at least an hour. Holding your breath for an hour? Oh, it's a figure of speech, but the rest is all real. No exaggeration. I, I've never been so scared in all my life. And I can tell you one thing, friend. You won't see me going into the deeper woods this winter. There's some evil there. I think I need a drink myself. Did you hear that, Tanner? The woods aren't safe anymore. We really need to tell Marilia. Come, let's go home. <laughs>